Hi, my name is Kevin Dever. I'm the product manager for Insa EssentialInsight.mesh. And uh, today we're going to talk to Brandon, who is uh, Brandon Rank, who has uh, led the development team on the ISA 100 version of the EssentialInsight.mesh product. And we're going to talk a bit about um, what the design ca capabilities and how it communicates, and uh, some of the, some of the thought that went behind it from the engineers from uh, Bentley, Nevada. Welcome, Brandon. Thank you. Um, Looking at this product here, it's uh, it, it, now that now that we finished and, and it's it's been a long haul to get this done and, and completed. Um, from a design capability, what what kind of design thought and process went into this this, this product to to make it uh, what it is today? From the outset, this was a extremely challenging program. Uh, it it offered a lot of new technical challenges that we hadn't uh, been able to address previously. We were tasked with creating a uh, wireless system that was okay. battery operated, that was intrinsically safe, that uh, would meet all of our existing quality standards, uh, and at a reasonable price point. So that made it an extremely challenging program. Okay, and from a, from an industrial side of things, we're looking at this. You know, you know, we deal with obviously industry, all the different types of industries, mm -hmm. and uh, some are some are dirty and some are, are fairly clean. Um, what what are the things that have been considered on this product to to be put into those that industrial those industrial applications? So, to address the uh, hazardous area requirements, this is an intrinsically safe design. So okay. that means it's allowed in zone zero, one or two applications. Um, in addition to that, because it's intrinsically safe, you can actually hot swap the battery at any time without any lockout or tagout requirements. Uh, so it really allows the end user the flexibility to go in and change out a battery if need be and not have to, to uh, go through a lot of paperwork in order to just change a battery. Okay, so so ultimately you just you walk into the field and if you need to change it, no hot hot work permits, take it out, and it's been it's been certified to be able to do that, correct, which correct. which is a huge saving. Sort of mm -hmm. shutting shutting a facility down to and on uh, scheduled maintenance. Mm -hmm. And what is the battery life? Um, I mean, how often would you would you expect that? Typical battery life is around three years, but the actual battery life depends uh, heavily on the configuration that the end user chooses. And by configuration, I'm specifically referring to the data collection interval. The WSIM is a very configurable device. Uh, it allows the end user to set uh, many parameters, such as filter corners, uh, wave waveform parameters, such as number of lines and things like that. Uh, but from a battery life standpoint, probably the single biggest uh, thing to consider is how often do you want to collect that data. We can uh, support data collection rates down to five minutes or as infrequently as once a day. Okay. Uh, if you choose the five minute interval, it, it will uh, have a dramatic impact on battery life. But under typical, app typical applications where a you know, two to four hour data collection interval is used, you can expect three years battery life. Okay, and you can do dynamic and static data, correct? Correct, correct. The system allows you to set up your static data interval, as I referred to, of down to 15 minutes. Dynamic uh, data collection is limited to once per day, and that's just because of the sheer volume of data associated with collecting a waveform and sending it back to system one. It takes right. a lot of time. Yeah, because we, we had Billy Gillison and, and, the, and he, he came out with similar figures and, and mm -hmm. that, that, that it is customizable. It's not yep. locked into from the system. Can be uh, System one, it can be customized. So so from a, um, uh, a, a we, we, we call it scanning balance of plant where we take a set amount of readings and uh, it's not it's not real time. Um, it, it, I'm assuming that what it does is once it, it finds an issue or there's an error, the software will alert you um, in system one when there's a, when there's a high vibe, high vibration or high temperature, whatever parameter you've set on that. Correct. So the user can set up uh, alarm thresholds uh, based on their own criteria, and once that threshold is exceeded, the software will alarm, and at that point, the user can actually decide to investigate further using the data on demand feature that's built into the system and what that allows is rather than wait for the next scheduled data collection interval, uh, the user can actually request a data collection uh, event right now. Okay, we have the stainless steel uh, item here. What, what does this actually uh, uh, do? Because it looks fairly robust and... and uh... Well, this was in line with our uh, desire to make this a, a very robust system for industrial applications. This is a stainless steel base. It's intended to mount on Unistrut or other readily uh, accessible equipment within the plant. And then the WSIM itself 
simply snaps in and there's a set screw to hold it in place. The idea behind this is that if a battery replacement is required, um, it makes it simple for the user to go out into the field, disconnect it, remove the six screws here, pop on a new battery and put it back in place. And mm -hmm. that allows you to leave the transducer cables which are attached to each of these four ports uh, to uh, stay in place the entire time and minimize the amount of uh, time spent replacing a battery. So, so the design with the cables coming out to the accelerometers yep. is that this could be located uh, far away from the actual motor if needed. Um, at, it doesn't have to be uh, vertical, it could be at horizontal and uh, you could run the accelerometers to the location of the bearing and actually bring the data back into this and then from, from this standpoint it, it, it's meshed to other items like the repeater we have here yep. um, that goes through to a gateway, correct? Correct. correct. And this this gateway we'll be, we'll be showing today is the Yokogawa Gateway. Uh, could you tell us a bit more about that? So the Yokogawa Gateway is part of the ISA 100 standard. It is designed to operate with any device um, that's compatible with the ISA 100 standard. And the WSIM or the Essential Insight platform is ISA compliant. So that allows us to drop a WSIM and System 1 onto an existing ISA installation or participate in a greenfield application where there's a, a new network going in. Okay. Um, you've covered a great amount of uh, uh, information today that, that I think uh, users would be really happy to hear and, and, and how much time has gone into to actually designing this robust product um, and making that it's, it's, it's really, really a uh, uh, unique product, compact design. Um, I know it's epoxy filled and uh, we've, we've, uh, we've covered some of those things off to get the standards uh, up for the hazardous areas. Um, but I want to thank you for coming in today and actually sitting down and discussing a bit more about the design capabilities of this product and we look forward to, um, to, to seeing you out in the field and having salespeople call on you and, and uh, talk to you a bit more about the Essential Insight Mesh product, uh, the ISA 100 version. Thanks, Brandon, for coming in. Thanks really for appreciate it. Me.